Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Advanced Warfare In-Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the Heat Sink Attachment. This is the go-to attachment for any energy weapon in Advanced Warfare. I use it on several of them. We'll talk about that a little bit more later on in the episode. The gameplay that you're seeing right now is me using the AE-4, which is the energy assault rifle part of the DLC, playing a hard point on comeback and get a little bit over a 2.0 KD, not hitting the objectives too hard. I'm mostly slaying and project protecting the objectives so that my teammates can capture them easily. This was not discovered by me. This was discovered by ProBaddy on the Den Kearson forum, so I linked his post and his Twitter down there in the description to make sure that proper people get their credit. Kind of, I don't know, I just I kind of like citing my sources and making sure that the person that does the work gets the credit for it. But it's also a little bit more technical than what you're going to see here today, so if you want even more information, you can go to the Den Kearson forums and read that. It's linked down there in the description. But let's talk about energy weapons and the heat sink. Each and every energy weapon in Advanced Warfare has four variables for heat. Heat's kind of like your ammo, your reload. There is heat per shot how much you gain per shot. Obviously, something like the EPM-3, which shoots a little slower, is going to gain more per shot than the EM-1, which is shooting at absolute maximum speed. There's a cooling rate, which is how fast it cools off when you're not shooting. A fast cool, because you can actually hit X before it overheats, or it's X on console, you know, it varies on whatever, but uh, Xbox, you know, it varies on whatever one. To do a sort of fast cool, you can open it up and just let it cool off real fast, and it's much faster than the overheat penalty, where if you just hold down the trigger until the weapon overheats, it's going to do a sort of fast cool dissipate all the way, but it takes more time. It's slower, and the heat sink affects three of these variables. The first thing that it does is you have 0.75x heat per shot, or 25% less heat per shot. And this is going to effectively give you 33% more fire time, because remember your fire time is going to be the inverse of that heat per shot. So the heat sink gives you 33% more time to fire with whatever weapon. That's 33% more time to hold down the trigger on the EM-1 and laze people. A couple more shots with the EPM-3 and several more with the AE-4. So just keep that in mind. Just thought I'd put that up there, kind of both of them. We're going to do that several times today. Next up, the heat sink has 1.25x cooling rate, which is effectively 20 percent faster cool time and you're gonna say hold up drifter how can it cool 25% faster on top and then you have a 20% faster cooling time on the bottom you got to remember that this is actually 25% it's not like you're adding cold 25% it's 25% faster dissipation or like 25% losing heat so you actually have to use the inverse of this and it, it gets a little crazy but mathematically it works out to 25 to 20% 20 faster cooling time so if you're not shooting, your weapons will actually cool down faster with the heat sink. It's not just about adding more capacity. It's about allowing you to completely cool off faster in between bursts of fire, which is really good. That's very beneficial. I do this a lot on the EM-1. I, I spray, and then I hold, and I let it cool down all the way, and I shoot it again. I do the same thing on the AE-4 here. It helps a whole ton with the heat sink. I can wait just a few seconds, and it completely cools off. This helps do it faster, so it's good. Next up, we have the overheat penalty time, which is also affected by the heat sink. You have have 0.75x overheat penalty time and since this is measuring a completely different statistic I have a completely different effective number down here again it's just 25% less overheat time I mean pretty straightforward since this is measuring a flat variable it's not a rate or a change or a gain or a loss it's just total time 0.75x means 25% less time that's less time spent reloading and more time getting you back into the action shooting people faster so that's very beneficial to you of course Sorry that the numbers got all crazy today, that's just kind of how it works sometimes, and that's also one of the reasons I wanted to link ProBaddy's post down there in the description. If any of that was confusing to you, I would highly recommend you go read that whole post, it'll clear it up. And as for what I think about the heat sink, I think heat sink, heat sink is an overall extremely useful attachment for energy weapons. It's useful for the EM-1, it's useful for the AE-4, and it's useful for the EPM-3. You really can't go wrong with it. There's no downsides to using it. There's not a whole ton of trade-offs or great attachments that you're missing out on with these weapons. So I would say if you want to use it, go ahead. It affects three of the main variables on the gun. That's cooldown time and how long you can fire before you overheat and how long it takes to overheat. So very, very beneficial. As for me personally, I use it on the AE-4 and the EPM-3, but not the EM-1. I use the EM-1 Poner, which again, it overheats a little bit faster, but I found that the EM-1 has plenty of time to spray and pray with. I don't overheat it that much. It's not really an issue, or maybe I just have the timing down better. Whereas the AE-4 and the EPM-3, I do have a tendency to overheat much, much faster. Could just be my play style. Again, there's nothing wrong with it on the EM-1. I've ran it on the EM-1 several times and it works great, so don't be discouraged about that. But uh, again, great attachment. Really, really great attachment. Can't go wrong with it. 
Well, guys, that's all for this episode of In-Depth. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something useful. If you'd like to check out the previous episode, that's on Special Variants, and the next episode is going to be on the Lynx Kingpin. Going to get back into sniper rifles. As always, if you enjoyed, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.